I love the special. I thought it was Me great. Too. Actually, I thought it there was I thought actually it was a unifying message if you really listened. Me too. If you if you if you really listen to what Dave was saying and how he came full circle Agreed. with it. And I almost think the jokes and some were like some were just so spot on and hilarious, but I actually think the jokes were like almost like the side dish. Yes, I to agree. What, to what he was trying to say, you know, and what he's trying to say to to America and people as a whole. Dystopia tonight. Hey guys, hey. what's up? <clears throat> How are you, man? I'm all right, man. Just taking it easy. Uh, I'm just. I'm like, wait a minute. You guys, you guys, you guys have like the lead guitarist from Third Eye Blind. Yes. He can't follow me. <laughs> <laughs> He's got real talent, and I'm just gonna sit here with my fat bald face and be like, no, nope. oh, I've got a clever. Has he seen you zoom in and out though? Because no. I feel like no, he's not gonna be able sexy. to do that. It's very sexy. He can't, yeah, you know, he can't match my 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 stupid <laughs> homemade web studio games. You know, it's like, <laughs> like look at me, hi, la hello, ladies. You know? What are they? <laughs> what is that called in film when they actually zoom? Like the, they zoom out on the pan in, them? pan out. That's well, no, not that. I know that. What's you're the... <laughs> talking about that Goodfellas thing where they're sitting yeah. in the diner and the camera's moving Spielberg. back. He did it in Jaws in. with Roy. Sh oh, yeah, uh, yeah, Roy yeah, Schneider. Yeah. That really uh, fast zoom. That, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Fuck, I think there's that, a name for it. I can't see it. You know, like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, no. bum, bum, bum. Yeah, it's um, pretty snazzy. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah. It's great, man. I haven't seen you since we did the charity event together, but I love that. I feel like we clicked pretty quickly. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah. And it's, it's and especially since it was like three o'clock in the morning that we were both on for like. Yeah. God, I, it was on. I was on. Forever. I didn't. I'll be honest with you. I don't even remember what the charity event was for. I hope somebody got money and they're happy. <laughs> like I hope some kid got their feeding tube out and now they're eating pork chops again. Whatever. Yeah. It is. But I, yeah. I'm. I was really happy to be a part of that. That was a really anti-Muslim statement, huh? All right. <laughs> How's that an anti-Muslim statement? Because I wanted one kid to eat pork chops. It's not like I was like, I'm gonna tie down all children and force the pork down their throat. <laughs> what the hell are you mean? Oh, really? That's gonna be. Uh, that's are gonna we be going a... there? Is this? Is this? Hold on. I better not talking about a trans person or my cousin's <laughs> nipples that I saw one time at a pool event. Like what? Do I, what? What do you? Mean? Come on! Oh my job. god! If I say eggs, am I anti-vegan or something? Am I yeah. gonna have, like the vegans? Like, oh! <laughs> I cannot wait to take that clip out of context. Yeah, that's dude, <laughs> dude, dude, I don't. I don't. Look, forgive my language. I don't care anymore. I don't give no. a fuck. It's just, I'm too no. old to care. Like, my, I like I was telling you, my buddy from the UK earlier with you guys, they like he's a vegan, and I just hammer at him all the time. Nice. Like when we when we go out to eat, I'm like, oh, is that an impossible burger? He's like, yeah, you know why it's impossible? He's like, why? And I forgot what I said. Damn it, that was a good joke. <laughs> That's age. No, but he was like, I was like, you know why it's impossible? And he's like, why? And I was like, because it's not real meat. It's not real. You're not eating anything real. You know what right. you're gonna be after this meal? He's like, what? I was like, hungry. Because he can't. <laughs> Nothing impossible can fill you up. Did he <laughs> did he put his tail between his legs and cry and no he, he didn't do no, he didn't do shit he, what I he know did was he waited for the opportune he's a normal moment. human being yeah because he waited for the opportune moment the next day we're uh, ordering breakfast at a deli and I was like uh, I'll take a bacon egg and cheese on a roll with ketchup and black pepper and he was like <laughs> oh you're having the murder the murder sandwich for breakfast <laughs> he was like ah. He's like, don't worry about it. I've got a defibrillator upstairs for after you're done with breakfast. <laughs> That's like, what people should be doing is giving other people shit. Like, I don't understand. You know, like it, there's there's something to be said about like, you know, obviously not like Trump supporters and shit, but like when when people who are like parents who are slightly conservative or whatever, and you know, anytime like our side of the aisle is talking about like talking to people who are on the other side and their family members and they kind of say shit that's inappropriate, whenever you come back with whining. When they're like, you can't say that. It's like, that's why they fucking, like, I would hate you if you whined constantly. Like, have a point right. or come back at them with a jab. Say something right. fun. Like, you know, they're not running for anything. They're just your family. So fucking oh, relax, yeah. you know. 
But like people are like whining constantly, and that's why they fucking do it. Like, shut the fuck up. Like, it's so obnoxious. Oh, yeah. People used to be able to talk and joke around and shit on each other. And it's like now it just becomes so fucking accepted to like, you know, like I have so many people who end conversation that I know quickly that I'm just like, what's who hurt? What is hurting you? Right. Like, why are you who told you this was acceptable? <laughs> you know what I mean? But I'm like, we're literally just talking. I just I like I like I have a I have an uncle in my family who who's one of the browner people in my family, which right. makes it even funnier, but straight up crazy trump psycho mm. like just <laughs> anything trump says is like well he's the next kind he's the second coming of christ and i'm sure. like really so christ went from having like these amazing abs to this <laughs> he looks like job of the hut like what do you like no i don't think jesus would reincarnate himself that way you know and he was like right. get out no but he's just he's just crazy he will say the most crazy anti his own life right to support Trump. And I'm just kind of like, he's like, these damn Latinos coming over through the border and they're going to kill everything and take all the women. And, and I'm like, first of all, you're 85. There are no women for you. And, yeah. <laughs> and, and by the way, they all look like you. Yeah. So if you go hang out by the border, you're getting shot. He was like, but I would die as a patriot for America. Shut up. Yeah. No, not. My friend is, um, you know, my friend's Indian and her parents actually immigrated over here or whatever, but they are two, they're huge Trump supporters. Yeah. They always, they watch, they, like every time I've been over there, there's Fox News on the fucking TV. They love that shit. They loved Bush and they love Trump and nothing he did could wait. It was like they literally crossed over the border, turned around and went, now get off my land, you foreign best. Like they're just, you know, <laughs> where I'm like, what happened? It's what like happened? their feet touched earth, it touched the ground in America and they just turned around like really slowly in a horror movie, like, Arr! <laughs> I hate having anybody brown. You're like, yeah, no, ex bro. exactly. Well, I don't know. You? Have you seen the uh, Chappelle special? Yeah, I watched it. Yeah, me too. I uh, I loved it. I don't understand any like. I mean, uh, here's one of the things. I feel like if you didn't see the last three or five, what is it? Five? Yeah, it was six total. Yeah. I think six total. Yeah. If you didn't see the last five, then yeah, then I don't know. I like you're not gonna like this one either. <laughs> I, it, what, I, mean, like, I know exactly and it's just kind of like what's really funny is like there are trans comedians coming out and defending him oh they don't matter by the way you cannot like dude i i'm this this shit infuriates the hell out of me it's like you're you're not it, it doesn't matter like there's they don't understand that there's an ideology that follows this shit so like it doesn't it doesn't matter if you're trans or not it, what matters is, is that you're not speaking verbatim the, the the bullshit pablum that they have and that's yeah. it so you could be that's why like again like i don't like there's so many people who i was talking to about this who just didn't know the story because i knew it before he talked about it right. in this special right. but who didn't know about the trans community they had been friended yeah by daphne and uh -huh. i remember when it happened online like i remember when she tweeted it and everything and and like the pushback she got and it literally like people it's such cognitive dissonance because it's it's coming from people who you know uh Kind of constantly talk about sensitivity and all that other shit, but they have none if you don't agree with exactly their point of view. Like, it's it's insane, and everybody just wants to feel good. It's not like they're they're doing it because they actually. It's just that their side has said this is what makes you a good person, and there's no duality to it. Like like there's there's nothing to it. There's no gray area. It's just. I love the special. I thought it was Me great. Too. Actually, I thought it there was I thought actually it was a unifying message if you really listened. Me too. If you if you if you really listened to what Dave was saying and how he came full circle Agreed. with it. And I almost think the jokes and some were like some were just so spot on and hilarious, but I actually think the jokes were like almost like the side dish. Yes, I to agree. What, to what he was trying to say, you know, and what he's trying to say to to America and people as a whole. It's like you you can't be, and this is something I, I've I've talked about privately a lot with my with my girlfriend and with my, my friends and family and close. It's hard to be like. I don't want to use the term woke because it's annoying. It is <clears throat> um, just like I, problematic and triggered. Right. It, it's it. You can't be for civil rights if you it, it like. My whole thing is the whole, all of this, all of these issues that they've covered fall under one thing, and that's humanity, human mm -hmm. rights, and just treating each other very well, respectfully, and also joking with each other, yeah. mocking each other. I mean, I grew up in the projects of New York City in the 70s and 80s, and we destroyed each other on yeah. a daily basis. Mm -hmm. And I grew up in a predominantly Irish and German area, 
So my projects were like predominantly Irish and German for a while mm -hmm. growing up. We were like one of the few minority families and we got shit all the time. These white kids set me on fire once. <laughs> Literally, like my <laughs> whole arm was on fire. They set me on fire. I was like six years old. They, and they called me the N word and the S word and all this crap. They called me nigger and spake and all this stuff. And to this day, I probably run into like two or three of them often enough like throughout the years and they all love me and it's just kind of like yeah. it's weird but it's it it, it it's just weird it, it, i have a probably a very different uh perspective on a lot of stuff because i knew i grew up with a lot of racist people i knew i grew up with people that were taught to be racist right because that's what it is you're taught to be racist yeah americans yeah. are taught to be racist they don't even want to deal with that right you know they, they, but if you talk about critical race theory it's like oh ah! Oh, right, right. And so if you want to be taught the opposite of racism, and I, like we're trying to teach your children how not to be racist. No! Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but if we want to teach them something racist, they're like, oh, well, you know, there's an excuse that we'll make up for that. It's just oh, yeah. weird. It's just, um, I think American society as a whole is what Dave was talking about. And it's kind yeah. of like, you know, I'm not anti-trans. I'm not this. I'm not a transphobic person. But I guess I am transphobic. Even though I did this and I do this and I live this way, right? And, and I'm not and I'm not saying this to name drop or, or anything. Like I'm not best friends or close with him. You know, I've hung out with Dave a few times. You know, at the cellar and yeah, one a couple times at, at like you know after a show or whatever. And 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 I've had conversations with the man. He's a brilliant guy. He's a very he intelligent, super hyper intelligent person, hyper aware person. So uh, he knew. He knew right away what the perception was going to be. Oh, yeah. Special. And I and love he that he embraced kind of like, it and leaned right, into it. Right. He leaned way into it. And people were just like, here's the thing. We live in a, we live in an attack culture. Mm -hmm. And and I feel like people just will attack anything you say. If they, if they just search to find fault. Nobody's really listening to each right. other. We're not yeah. communicating with each other anymore. We're just looking for our in. To find right. fault, and then also then then gather our little get group of whoever you know our little troops around our our our, our thing, and then go after you and, and try yeah. to shit on you and control you, and it's just kind of like <sighs> the most egregious thing I think people can do is also comment on it without seeing it, right? You know what I mean? Like I don't know how you like how how a society how a people in general not learned that you cannot just read this fucking bullshit on the internet. Like how many false articles and clickbait shit do you have to see? And then watch the thing they're talking about to realize that, yeah, this is a game to them and you're part of it and you're in it and they're looking to get their narrative across because it's it happens all the time. What? And there's there's shit that literally like I've seen I've read all the articles about the special that criticize it and the amount of shit that they get wrong or decide to interpret is is amazing to me. Well, I think they're pulling I think they're pulling the headline is actually usually his punchline and then he's using it. To yeah. be tongue in cheek and like, you know, I really just hate white people. And they'll use that as a headline. And you're like, no, that was the joke. That was right. the joke. Like, you don't. And my when my wife saw it, she's like, this is ridiculous. She's like, everything that you're re that she saw article wise, which she's like, he's making a joke and you're trying to twist it into like a statement, which was yeah. weird to me. It right. is. Well, you should never read stand up. No. Yeah. yeah. You ever write your stand up and then try just reading it like you're yeah. reading? It's It's awful. Well, it's like I've had to get it approved a couple times to do stuff. You know, when you do like a, yeah. a TV thing or whatever. Yeah. And I always find it so fucking ridiculous when they're like, would you mind writing out what you're going to say just so we have an idea? And I'm like, absolutely not. <laughs> like, that, I'll, I'll tell you a roundabout. I mean, you ha sometimes you absolutely have to do it because you're contractually bound to do it. But like, it is kind of interesting when like you're doing it and you're like, fuck, this is yeah. not, not, they're not going to get any of this. No. And they're going to think you're not funny. And, yeah, and, exactly. And or I, I like it when you do it, when you submit it, and they're like, um, hmm, can you change this? Yeah. You mean the punchline? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Can you change this? We don't uh, – I, I had one TV thing that I was up for, and they wanted me to submit my material. And I did – and I used to do this material about my parents mm -hmm. and also about, like, like how colonialism is the reason why we're racially mixed, you know, like mm. why most people from the Caribbean – are racially mixed mm -hmm. and man they did not want to hear it they were just like just say you're puerto rican just say you're the i'm like but i'm not Jesus i am but i'm Christ. not i'm like i'm, I'm i said due to because I, I what i basically i i illuminate they had eliminated the word rape from it right because right? you know because i used to be like well due to rapist colonizers uh here i am 
and I'm mixed. <laughs> and I love you all because a little bit of all of you is in me. And right. a little bit of me has probably been in some of your daughters. Now, <laughs> you know, and that just that's just me spreading what I've been taught genetically. Right. Colonization. Mm-hmm. Spread the genes apart. Be a good <laughs> human. You know, like and it was this whole thing, this whole play on words, like this thing where I'm like talking about like how we got here and how nobody wants to it used to be when we when we were kids. They'd have cartoons and they'd talk about the great melting pot that America is. Oh, yeah. You, when was the last time you saw anything melting pot about America? Like Nothing. And we didn't seem to be getting farther away it. from it. Right. Okay. We don't talk about it. We don't no. want to talk about it. No, that's the thing that gets me about cultural appropriation, which I think is such fucking absolute horseshit. Like the amount of stuff that people have to apologize for. And it's like, you have to decide. You have to decide if we're this inclusive nation that lets people from all over every fucking border join in and grow and whatever. Or you have to decide that we're all our own separate fucking island and we're not allowed to incorporate shit. Because, you know, I mean, we let other people eat mayonnaise that's probably is that white i don't know it seems white but you know what i mean like, like it it seems generic and horribly bland and not something i at all like uh, don't take the mayonnaise don't away take from, mayonnaise us. from us i'm actually all for it thank with you. you i can take it Try to um, ruin but it's but it's insane like and the funny thing is is we have a i'm i don't know if you've ever been to tom's river new jersey uh yeah. on, you wouldn't even you shouldn't even go My aunt used to live there oh fantastic i'm happy for your aunt um i'm really not it's a terrible place now yeah Uh, (laughs) but but you know it's funny like my one of my buddies uh teaches at one of the sister high schools i went to and it's uh tom's river south and their mascot for fucking years has been the tom's river indians and they have they're, they're the only high school out of the other two that are super super um uh spirit driven you know what i mean they have a lot they have more school spirit than anybody i went there for a year they're all into it i think it's because it's such a smaller high school than the other ones so they're all very close um they're actually you're wearing their colors it's maroon and uh something else i don't know um but they <laughs> they maroon have uh, and brown skin like they're like yeah, yeah i was all... <laughs> yes exactly goddamn racist I, I think it may be gold i'm not sure um or you know it's blood red and tears that's awesome yeah <laughs> they, uh... <laughs> blood red and tears. you know again what we did to native americans yeah yeah exactly yeah it's a tongue and very tongue-in-cheek over there yeah. um but they you know they do they have like a um super maroon and somebody else that they go around and they dress up like it and every year it's the same shit that my friend says they go through is they have these giant school board meetings with uh native americans who are in the town who are representative of you know the i think I don't know. I think there's Native Americans that lived around Tom's River. I think it was the Lenny Lenape. Who the fuck knows, right? But anyway, they get together and it's literally split down the middle. 50% are super fucking, they classify themselves as woke and they want the name changed. And the other 50 are like, are you fucking kidding me? This is sick as shit. Like, we never get represented in this way. There's an entire high school that, you know, uh, has our, you know, heritage and all this stuff on it. And I don't know how you cannot see that both sides i understand if you're hurt by it or offended by it right, right. but i don't understand why it negates the other side who's like this is fucking sick as shit but they often try to blow those people off and it's their own fucking culture well it's how about this how about how about we find a compromise here and we in 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 the school itself does things that I don't know, celebrate Native American history, celebrate right. the Native American history of the people of, in that area that the school was named after. Yeah. You know, like, I, I, and I think it's, it's, that's the problem with our, with our country is like, we lack compromise. We lack the ability. And you look at like what Mitch McConnell does in, 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 in office where it's kind of like, well, I'm going to walk away. I don't care. You know, like he's got this yeah. whole mentality. Like I'll just walk away. I will stymie all government. <laughs> you know, just by walking away and I'm going to hold our votes and just, yeah. he, he shuffles off like this little villain and he's just, and he yeah. goes into hiding and it's just weird. It is. We have no, because there's no, we, every, all, both sides have these like really firm talking points. Great. Yeah. Have your talking points, right. have your beliefs, but you gotta, for the country, for 300 and something million people, you have to be able to come together. Yeah, Absolutely. Because it's not about you, and that's the problem. Is that we've we, man? I can go into this forever, but no, I hear you. <clears throat> when when we allowed for Citizens United to happen, and stand, and and and, and big corporations were allowed to throw billions of dollars into our elections, yeah, and at candidates, it wrecked America Absolutely. permanently. And until it's removed from from you know from a law, it's got it, it, we're we're screwed. We're doomed. 
I agree. Because we we are literally like you look at what happens. Like we, you were talking earlier about, um, well, this whole thing is the same thing. But it's like you, you see how people are reacting to these articles about Chappelle special, right? Sure. Oh, it's this, it's that, and what a bastard, and blah blah blah. Mm-hmm. But then you got to look at the mediums we're watching. We're seeing all this spread out on, and that's Facebook. Facebook has yeah. poison this country. Absolutely. Yeah. Like it's and it's and and Zuckerberg doesn't give a shit. No, like it's no, this whole twisted thing where they want the negativity they want people to be emotionally riled up i mean there are there are now people who are practicing uh psychology and therapeutic their therapeutic techniques to help people yes. with their facebook life and and how to deal with the constant barrage of information they're gaining off of social media it's- it's straight up poison. I mean, even for like, I mean, I consider myself somebody who can avoid that kind of shit. And I, and I think our generation basically has a better handle on it just because we grew up without it. We had tape deck still VHS and CD play. You know what I mean? Like we grew into it instead of it just being there automatically. So I think we still have the ability to disassociate from it and kind of look at it objectively. Uh, Some of us, but then there's like our, our parents are fucked. Most of them Our grand, anybody older than them is fucked because, you know, they're just inundated with shit they've never heard or seen before. And I think uh, mostly by design, like I I agree too. Yeah. Absolutely. Tom, it's made to do exactly what it's supposed to do, which is generate revenue. Yeah. And the best way to generate, well, it's it's also unregulated. So there's nobody, no outside entity saying, Hey, let's stop fucking people up (laughs) let's let let them let's try to earn while being socially conscious and not destroying the mental state i'm actually for it being unregulated except that i I think i think it is i think it became i don't know i may be wrong in the way i'm saying this too but like to me when it started it was a free-for-all wild west style and a lot of fun i think people had like um, and you know, free reign, like my friends and I used to shit on each other and have a good time. It was just posting weird shit and clips and fun pictures and whatever it was. Almost all social media was like that Twitter, whatever. I think when it became, um, like, I think when it had, when it has the appearance of a wild west, but it's regulated by the people within the companies, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's that, regulated- well, that's exactly what I meant. I didn't mean okay. regulated by like, I meant the corporations oh, okay. unregulated on how they create the algorithms to expose people to right. certain subjects and not right. expose right. them to others. Yeah, because anytime uh, well, there's yeah, a- I, I totally hear you. I feel like I miss, I miss. No, 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 I know what you mean that. now too. Yeah, I figured that was because I was like, I think, but like the, you know, I feel like that's a lot of the kind of stuff. Like as soon as people figure out how to monetize a thing is when it starts to get stripped away of it because people monetize something, but then like to give it the perception of fun right. or freedom or whatever the hell it is. I don't yeah. know if you'll agree with me too, Mark, but even like, I think comedians to a certain extent, like when you watch these podcasts now, like, um, you know, all the, all the top comics in the game, you know what I mean? Or whatever, like the same way that we, they used to complain about people on comedy central where it was only the same six comedians shoved right. in your face over and over right. and over again. And they're just branded to death. Yeah. It's almost the same thing with popular podcasts now where they all feed off each other. This person yeah. says something about this guy. This guy says something <clears> back <throat> to this one. This one over here gets in on it because, yeah. it's you the know, East Coast, then, West Coast rap battles of the late it, 80s. Exactly. And they but they yeah. but they're making exactly. money hand over fist. Yeah. And their audience is the one that suffers because they're the right. ones that duke it out. Meanwhile, all these guys are fucking rolling in cash and, yeah. you know, living it up. And it's it's uh it's the same thing with politics. though. they're living it up. And everybody else fights. Well, I personally, I just want to say, Tom, I loved your site. I loved MySpace. I wish you would bring it back. <laughs> Me? Oh, I wish I was that, Tom. And, wow. Uh, and that just, is hilarious. I just, and I just, and I, and personally for me, I just think, I, <clears throat> I mean, if you want to dig a little deeper, it's where this all starts is when, uh, when Reagan was president. Oh, totally. And he, and he had that whole thing done with the FCC where the news no longer had it to be factual. Yeah. So w- once you, once you, break news media you know you you free these people up to be able to legally bullshit the people sure is when it starts to, and then with the advent of the cable network and cable television becoming huge it was like the perfect time to create what we're seeing today 40 yes. years later and it yeah. took 40 years but you know 35 but it's it's really insane how uh, a supposed news brand could just go out on the air and lie directly to these people oh totally and there's and no over. there's no um and they're making trillions like i wouldn't even say billions trillions yeah 
Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And there's no fucking consequence for us right. for it. And that's the problem. We live we live in a time also of no accountability, no and no consequence. But they want to hold comedians accountable well, and, because, and punish them and show yeah. them consequences. Exactly. Because you can't say this or you can't uh, you know express that and that's just terrible. But they want to hold us accountable. Imagine trying to hold Carlin accountable. Mm -hmm. Imagine Oh my god. Or imagine prior. trying to tell prior yeah, you can't talk about shooting your car and slapping a woman and all that. Like you can't. I love the. I was always thinking of the shooting the car thing when I think of, uh, right. you know, when I think of can't like canceling, you know, prior right. or whatever. Imagine can And the thing is, and it's like, what I think, what Carlin said will hold true to our deaths. Well, I'm not dying anytime soon. You guys, I hope for are, but I'm just saying until <laughs> the uh, forevermore. Is that Carlin said it's it's a game. We're pawns and we're not. Oh yeah, in it. you know we're not in it. We're not. We're not. A pawn he, he always used to say like enjoy the life. enjoy the show. Right. Yeah, and that's we're not. Yeah, oh, exactly, one hundred percent. And I think once people realize that, they'll fucking loosen the fuck up and and just right. enjoy it. But the craziest thing is a couple things. So um, the the ship going back to the Chappelle thing or whatever. Um, it's it's like. Uh, Oh my god, I had a point and I fucking lost it, and I was gonna hem and haw and um my way through. I'm cutting this shit out. Uh, <laughs> it's gonna go from right to what you said to immediately, my, <laughs> immediately my point if it ever comes. No, no, to no, me. no, no. I know what the fuck you had said it. Well, 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 I'll talk about the prior thing. So the, uh, I was like, you know, I talk to my friends about this all the time, and I think I'm sure they quietly think it's appalling. But I'm like, how many, pe how many uncomfortable people is his? I shot at two women and almost hit a car joke worth a lot of uncomfortable people because it's fucking like that's the skill level that that guy's at you know what i mean that he can own up to his own flaws pay for them consequentially you know privately or whatever the hell it is come back turn it into something to talk about and that's fine i don't I, you know what i mean and people didn't think like that back in the day they weren't like oh my god this is fucking horrible it was just like it is that guy's fucked up. He's not me. And this is funny at the moment. And I'm going to go home and live my life and he's going to go do whatever. But that, I think the, that shit's invaluable. I think those experiences are invaluable. And I think hearing them. <clears throat> I think what's, I think what's sad is there's, we, we, we live in this false Judeo Christian society, right? Like Christianity is so disconnected from the teachings of the person of Jesus Christ. It's just so, oh yeah, <laughs> they're, the, they're the stuff they support, the things they believe in, yeah. all this stuff. But they're making billions of dollars off of these people that are just like, oh my God, save me, Jesus! Here's right, ten percent of my check every week, and and and, and tax free, mind you, they don't pay any taxes, right? And they're driving around. They one guy like owns a former stadium, and he holds his massive church gatherings. And he's driving a Lamborghini. That little creep. What's his name? Because I met oh, him one time. I'm, I know you're talking about Joel Olstein. Um, Olstein. Ols Joel, Joel, you know, I met Joel. Joel. Joel, yeah, Joel. Olstein, he's a creep. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, you met him? Yeah, I met him at Sirius XM Radio. I was doing. I was doing Fugal wow. Sang show. Right. And uh, so we do an episode of, of John's show. Who I love. Hi, John. Oh yeah, I love John too. He's the greatest. And, John, uh, shout out. And uh, so I do that show and I go to go after the show, I go into the bathroom mm -hmm. and I'm just in my glory by myself at the urinal. Very happy, by the way, to be by myself at the urinal. <laughs> and these two <laughs> burly men walk in, they check around and then Joel, his security team comes in mm -hmm. and one stands right behind me as I'm peeing. Mm -hmm. And what do you think Joel Olstein does? Do you think Joel Olstein has like normal people? Like if there's an empty stall, like an empty urinal, you go to the next one over. Right. No, this prick comes right next to me. And he's peeing right next. And then I caught him like, oh, hey, like this. I, I turn around and, I, and I'm like feeling this. And I look over and he's looking right at me. And his security's mm -hmm. look, And I'm like, <laughs> man, I'm going to hurt somebody. Like, I'm really going to have to. It's going to be Mark right. Anthony, Ken Media, Mark Anthony Ramirez destroys uh, Joel Osteen's security team and Joel at, at mm. XM Studio because it was just very disconcerting very uncomfortable but like so i finish peeing i go to and i step back and when i step back security steps back behind me and i go to wash my hands and he's just a creep he's just a tiny little creepy person you know yeah and it, oh it is just, he tiny oh he's tiny wow i know you like to make fun of your height john but this guy like he's he's probably about your size or a little smaller beautiful he's a tiny guy 
I so you it. should take them. We should set it up like you guys should have like a celebrity we, boxing match. I would do it in a heartbeat. I was in the say, name of gonna, Christ, and you yeah. should whoop his ass. How great would it be if a dude who somewhat keep people keep saying looks like Jesus kicked the shit out of Joel Osteen? Oh my God, we got to set this up. I'll we got to go start. We got to start doing some memes <laughs> 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 because it would be great. He's so little. He's a little shit, oh, and that's he fucking... really he's just a creep. Like you just. I yeah. felt creep energy like, oh, Ooh. you're this guy that refused to allow people into your mega church to be safe during a hurricane. Oh, yeah. Like, you know you're what's a crazy? piece of shit. Is you would think that one of my like one of my friends fully bought into it. Like I was over at her house once years ago and uh, and I just saw his book on her fucking nightstand. And I was like, uh, like, you know, you just heart breaks because you're like, oh, come on. Like, is this why you're doing well? Like you read this guy like because, you know, you're not, you know, at some point you're like your head's filled with garbage. Like I, you know it's it's just terrible so i'm like oh all right that's i want to if you guys allow me one second i, I just want to share this with america sure or, or how many people are going to listen <clears throat> you're not middle class <laughs> none of you fuckers are middle class right um uh, re republicans have leaked what they what they think is middle class uh paul ryan said middle class is four to five hundred thousand dollars oh year. yeah absolutely uh i believe uh turkey neck has said four hundred and fifty thousand dollars <laughs> and here's the fact none of you fuckers who are out there struggling to pay your mortgages and live basically check to check or maybe have like 20 grand in the bank oh <gasps> you're not middle class they destroyed the middle class you right. are functionally poor yeah that is your economic status if you or your wife gets cancer that's it yep unless and no matter how like you'd have to have amazing health care so you supporting people like trump and you guys supporting anybody that doesn't support like universal health care for you and your family. You know, I, I don't <clears throat> you're you're voting against yourselves. That's right. it. That's my message. It's a good message, man. I go I, back, I go back, go back to whatever it is you do, you know, drink your yeah. beer, slap your kid when nobody's it, looking, whatever. <laughs> whatever it is you're really doing that you judge others for. Yeah. Go back. And you know what's crazy about the other thing too is <clears> I was <throat> I was looking at a friend's profile uh online that I hadn't seen in years, like a high school buddy. And uh he is 100% now conservative. Like I can tell. And he thinks he's being like, you know, he's criticizing all this other shit or whatever. And I looked at his house, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, there's pictures of his wife and whatever. And I'm like, I kind of see where that goes. Cause this guy wasn't bright when we went to high school, but and he and he works like a kind of, you know, uh, whatever Maybe he does. Isn't a, yeah. Construction. Yeah. Something. yeah. Something like cool. that. Right. Good, good but he's got a that. huge house. But the right. thing is, is that I feel like if you're young, and you start in that field, the older dudes that you're around are super conservative and you begin to believe that yeah. you got the things you got because you believe with they believe and because there's no friction there. Right. So that's it. Like this guy's got a he thinks I know he does. I think he thinks he's got a beautiful home and a beautiful wife and two kids and he owes it all to the Lord and Savior and also whoever Repu whatever Republican God is in power at the time. Yeah. Instead of going like again, like you just said, you are one paycheck away from not having anything. Right. <clears throat> functionally poor. That's what Americans yeah. are. And I'm talking 98% of Americans are functionally poor. Right. I don't care what they believe. You could have a couple hundred grand in the bank. One major illness, done. Right. Unless, you, unless your home is paid off, you don't own it. Right. And I want to get your opinion on this, too, real quick, because this is trending at the moment. Uh, Tom, you have the image, right? Look at this shit. Yes, so I love... I do. PC like like this is we were talking before about like uh, when you said Carlin and, and prior or whatever and that kind of language that the FC you know that started with the FCC and shit and then it kind of like flows over into whatever the hell it's developed into now but I love this do you have it yeah okay oh, cool there we go so <laughs> Kevin Lovato said my fans should know that I do not call them aliens because alien is a derogatory term for anything even extraterrestrials which is why I call them ETs she's literally building language we can and cannot say if these imaginary beings come like one, if aliens <sighs> do come here, she's going to be shocked to find out they just consider her another hole to rip through. You know what I mean? Like the idea that they're going to be like concerned about what, like the language around it, this is insanity. It's, <clears throat> I have a, a lot of thoughts on this. Well, first let's, I'll handle the extra dude. I'm such a nerd. Me so too. I, I will. I will. I will handle the extraterrestrial part of it with you. Beautiful. We <clears throat> there are a lot of physicists. There are a lot of philosophers. There are a lot of individuals. Neil deGrasse Tyson included. They're like, and some have said, you know, we're not ready for an alien encounter. Yes. Because we don't know if we're going to get like the magical uh, Spock-like, you know, benev <laughs> benevolent right. kind. Like, oh, we're going to share technology and food with you guys. Like, right. you know, some guy that moved into the neighborhood and. 
wants to teach you about how to make pizza like they do in New York, whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't know that. Oh, we're going to get the aliens from, you know, uh, uh, Independence Day who just shoot shit up. Yeah. And when you look at and when you look at the fact that we're all the same race, but we keep allowing ourselves to be dissected and cut apart by uh, differences in skin tone Mm -hmm. or genetic variances, slight genetic variances. Right. We all basically come from the same primordial ooze on this planet. Right. And we can't get along. What do you think an alien race is going to do if they show up? Well, that's why she's already letting them know you can't call them aliens. You got to call them ETs. Man, first of all, here's the thing with with celebrities, uh, with any celebrity, (laughs) and with anyone. Like my dad used to say when we were kids, opinions are like assholes. Everybody's got one. Remember that? Oh, yeah. Very simple. I remember that. And he would be, and he would say, listen, you're not going to always agree with other people. They're not always going to agree with you. That's it. That's life. You yes, know what? Exactly. At the end of the day, you don't have to beat the crap out of each other. You don't have to always agree. He was like, I don't agree with everything out of your mother's mouth. He was like, but I don't say nothing because I love her. And, you know, she lets me live in this house with you guys. You know, right. whatever, you know, his joke would be for the moment. But it's it's kind of like <clears throat> we're so we're such a triggered society right now. Yeah. It's upsetting. The, the concept of, like I said, of compromise and getting along has just been thrown out the window. And it's like, I'm, I'm right. You know, yeah. I'm right. And it's like okay you're right yeah it's How ruined do, a lot of better? um you feel yeah better? it's weird it's we've all become that one person at the party you have to watch your language around because they may get upset and ruin it like like everybody's having a good time everybody's talking everyone's joking around everybody right. knows that we're all friends and there was always that one person who was like this is the mom that declared themselves of the group or whatever the fuck it is and you're like all right everybody calm down you know and the vibe changes and then as soon right. as they leave like I, like I always had two groups of friends. I had friends who, you know, uh, more than two, but you know what I mean? I had those, that, those friends who loved board games and didn't drink and they were fun to hang out with. And you know, you go do that. And then I had friends that loved all that shit. Anything went board games, naked shit, you know, drinking all the time, crack pipes, deep drugs, you know. crack, yeah, whatever. Like everybody had a good time. If you put a gun to my head and tell me how to choose between the two groups, it would not be the board game people. <laughs> because i'd be like i like you but you're fucking you bum me out sometimes you know right, right. Oh, yeah, I, had, with... I had the athlete i had the my athletic go out dancing and party friends when i was growing up and then i right. had my you know nerdy dungeons and dragons for the whole weekend friends you know yeah and i still <clears> have a mix of like those two and those people are always a blast to be around and i not even that it's just that i feel like you know there's people who are so rigid in the way they do stuff and and i yeah. think that for some reason they've kind of i don't know oddly enough, like dominated the culture, which I feel like I get it. Everybody has their time to shine in the sun, but it's time to go back inside. I just, man, it's so funny. You say go back inside. Somebody was uh, another recent conversation that I saw uh, on the social media was uh, I love these Christians were like, uh, there was another shootout in Texas. Oh yeah. And this kid's, this kid's text, he was texting his mother and it became a meme and it went around and it really triggered me. I was triggered about it because I'm like, <clears throat> what I hate is people in my generation, Generation X, I guess. Yeah. Uh, they love to, and it's something when I noticed. Were you born? In, uh, March 29th, 1970. Oh, okay. Yeah. Gen X. So, Gen X guy. Um, and what's funny about my generation, but I also realize this is something that's very, it's just something we do as human beings for some reason. We're always shitting on the generation behind us. Oh, totally. Yeah. <clears throat> and a lot of Gen X people crap all over millennials. I mean, crap all over. Oh, yeah. I know, I know a, co- a former comic who actually wrote a book that just shits all over millennials. <laughs> and um, and it's just kind of like, you know, because he's a big business guy now. Mm. And uh, so it's just like, that's cool. But my whole thing is why you, we hate, we're hating on stuff we've created. Um. You know, like, you know, that's one, two. And I'm like... Really, I used to be able. I grew up in the projects, and I was able to. My mother would be like, "All right, go outside and play," and I'd be gone all day in New York City Mm -hmm. and be fine. Yeah, my daughter, who lives in the suburbs in Connecticut, has to do a gun drill every month. Yeah, uh, a a shooter drill every month. So you calling this generation pussies and weak and spoiled and all of that? What shooter drill did my generation ever have to do? Exactly. We We had the occasional fire drill which was a pisser because we'd all do odd shit like fart on the stairwell on the way down and make each other laugh and mm-hmm. be goofy. I once slapped a kid with a Bible. Look, I went to Catholic school. I couldn't help it. <laughs> In the middle of a fire drill, I was just like, my buddy was like, yo, bring your Bible, do the blessing. And I was like, we caught what, we, what this one kid, Anthony, and he was like, bless him. And I went, Plap, right back, the back of the head. We all <laughs> laughed, you know, and, you know right. whatever, you know, and Anthony laughed. So we all laugh when we pick on each other, we'd mess with each other, whatever. 
Right. And, you know, and, and, and look, Anthony's been blessed a long time since I did that. Mm -hmm. So there's that. But my daughter's got to do shooter drills. And, they, yeah. and oh, just hide behind your desk and fall and pray. Oh, my God. My child shouldn't. Uh, my child should not be forced to, right. to hope a bullet doesn't break through her desk, or some madman doesn't come in and just shoot her in the face. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's and, insane. And, yeah. So, and it's like, and what do we do about gun violence in this country? Nothing. Right. Nothing. We've right. done nothing. We we've, we've not addressed the issue at all. Nope. It, it, and, it's as simple. It would be as simple as returning to the Brady Band. Right. Just reenact the, the Brady the Brady uh thing, and that's it. Yeah. Did you guys really miss? No. And the thing is, is that's how you know that they're making too much money off of this shit, because if they didn't, it'd be done. If they could figure out another way to profit off of it, we'd be fine. But they can't. They're too they're too like, uh, you know, intertwined with the whole thing. And and uh, and they're not going to give it up. But they're just the Democrats are better at pretending they care. And Republicans are just like, fine, I don't give a shit. <laughs> yeah. And, and it's the problem. Right, my issue right now with, with Democrats is just. It's this, <clears throat> and I've pointed this out before. Isn't it very odd that Republicans get away with doing whatever the fuck they want? Democrats, of course, are just like, oh my god, I can't believe you're doing this. Stop it! Yeah, you're exactly. Hurting. And it's just like they they give these like speeches and they whine. Well, why can't you guys get anything done? And they're afraid to. And I'll tell you, it's it's this issue that Biden is facing facing now with like with all this, the Trump investigations and and he just stays quiet and 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 um, he's facing all these issues where. Like, you know, eliminating the filibuster and all the stuff that they could do that they refuse to do because they're like, well, if we do this, then when the Republicans are in power, they're going to do that. Mm -hmm. Well, re Republicans are going to do it anyway. Yeah, of course. So why are you why are you being cowards? You got to take the chance. Right. You've got to take the chance. And if it doesn't work out, guess what? At least you you, you took the chance and, it, and, and, and the rest of America saw you have the courage to take the chance. There's you know great... why people support Republicans? Because they're bold and they're of course I mean, and, and and it's false bravado there's a lot mm -hmm. of fake patriarchal bravado bullshit that republicans do that yeah. you know it's that cowboy kind of like you know reagan john wayne bullshit they're like that they're like oh my god they're so brave these guys are so tough they're tough exactly guys. it's but, it's like them putting trump's head on a ripped guy's body with the american flag like that's right. their whole thing is that they're right. all false there's a great meme that's basically Repu the difference between republican democrats and it's like republicans are an actual snake like slithering towards you and Democrats just have a, it's a snake, but with a unicorn's head on top, that says like, yeah. gay. you know what I mean? It's the same shit. Right. And, it's, and just, I, it's just, it's just funny. I think we, we live in this very twisted dystopian kind of like, it's just kind of a mess, man. It we really did not is... pay him to say dystopian. No, yeah, you know, no, that's one of my favorite. <laughs> it's actually one of my favorite words. I Thank just you. don't yeah. need, like to throw it out randomly. Because there's yeah. got to be a point to it. You can't just be like, oh, yeah, this burger reminds me of a dystopian society. <laughs> Shut up, fatty. Eat your Big Mac. You know. That's a bummer that you just said that because that was going to be our next sponsor. It's a burger company. And I was going to be like, this burger is just getting out of it. No, I love burger. Are you crazy? I make, but, but my, my missus makes the best burgers. She makes the best. She, we get the Ooh. meat and she makes them homemade. You got to get the 8515. Oh, yeah, shit. You, know, you got to get the right amount of fat content. She she talks about it like she's a scientist. It's hilarious. Yeah. And I love it because I get to eat it. Nice. Do you consider a hamburger a sandwich? <sighs> I was Man. talking about that with somebody the other day. And it's a it's a real fun. I didn't realize how touchy it was, but it's fucking touchy. It's, it's, yeah, see, that's the problem. Why is that touchy? Who gives a shit? Maybe you think it's a sandwich. Maybe I think it's a whole meal. Like, yeah. I, I think a burger, a burger and fries is a whole meal. Burger, fries, you get some coleslaw. Yeah. You know, there's I, so many here's the thing. things you could do with it. I only care about it is if somebody says, do you want to go get a sandwich? And then they take me to a burger place. Because that's not what I'm thinking of in That's my head. Connection. Yeah. Yeah. You're thinking subways. You're thinking well, yeah. a, 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 a fine Italian deli. Yeah. You know what I mean? Exactly. Or cats. You know what I mean? That's, so you yeah. got to clarify. I don't care if you personally think it's a fucking sandwich, but like, if you say to me, do you want to go get a sandwich and it's a burger? I'm mean, like, the fuck happened? Tom, I feel like this is, this was a date gone awry for John. Like the girl was like, Oh, we're going to go grab some sandwiches. <laughs> and they rolled up to a Wendy's and he was like, what the fuck we are. You know? Like, and he's been holding this. In his <laughs> been dying to talk to it to stop out somebody. I, I did have a friend there. when I was living in LA, man, I realized they also, they have no concept of what sandwiches are. Cause that's, I, I think that's just a genuinely East coast phenomenon. Like, Cause I was like, oh, I miss going to sandwich. So I'm gonna take you to the best sandwich place. And we went, and the bread was wrong, and whatever the fuck was inside of it was wrong. And I was just like, and I faked it. I was like, this is, 
it's good, good. For LA. yeah and i was it was such fucking horseshit i was like nobody knows where a deli is you can't make good you can't make good bread on in, in, on the west no Coast. their bagels suck i never had i didn't have a it, decent bagel and uh, we would it's the water you need yeah. New York water. People don't realize that. You need East Coast or New York water. There was a place <laughs> over there, though, that did that I did finally. We went to a good pizza place or whatever. And I was like, oh, my God, this is crazy. And they're like, yeah, they're from Brooklyn. And I was like, oh, that's great. But I'm like, it still doesn't make any sense why it tastes like it. And then they had fucking New York water shipped in. Yeah. To, to make. And I was like, that's, that's like. That's how you need that New York water to make. Yeah, yeah. That's insane. But good. There's a place in Florida that does that for their bagels. It's like yeah, they, really? they send the tanker down. Yeah. Yeah. Like a gas, like it's a gas truck, but it's all just water. It's crazy. That is kind of funny that they do that. Meanwhile, like half the country's burning. <laughs> There's yeah. water being delivered to a bagel place. Hey, people are starving. Can we get some of that water to put out this fire? No, fuck you, bagels. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the Goldsteins in Orlando need these bagels. <laughs> you know, you're just like, you know. Whatever. The gold oh wait a minute! I can't say that, right? Is that anti-Semitic? Because I'm not anti-Semitic, <laughs> you know. I, and it's it's weird. That's like last night we were out having cocktails because you know I'm such a big celebrity these days that I uh, <laughs> I was asked to judge a cocktail contest between two local bars in my, in oh, my shit. neighborhood. Oh nice! So oh man, you crazy? That's so, a fancy I, way of saying you were invited out to get drunk. Pretty much. Well, yeah. so it was also like my my best friend and my sister Cherie's birthday. Happy birthday, Cherie! Oh. And uh, she's also uh, the Happy editor in chief at Laptop uh, Magazine. Oh that shit! I, that I write. Uh, she's actually, I believe, the first black woman to be editor in chief of a major uh, tech journalism tech uh, wow magazine. So, wow. kudos to her and our entire Incredible. team at Laptop Mag. But um, <clears throat> yeah, so we went out for cartoons for the magazine. Oh man, yeah. You know, it's funny. That's a good ask. That's a yeah. good ask. Oh, thanks. Hey, cool. Um, <laughs> look at us conducting business and being capitalists. I know. I was actually, yeah. <laughs> I was actually just tossing it out there as like yeah. half a joke, and then you're like, I'll no, ask. that's a, no, I'll ask. Know, that's actually a good idea. Well, you know, it is because I do a lot of content. We're doing a lot of content for them now. Video. Uh, me and my partner Peter, who wrote, Peter, my buddy from the UK, who I was talking about earlier, mm. and who, who's here in, in Brooklyn, uh, and. Uh, so we go out and we do this thing and I was having this conversation with somebody and somebody overheard me saying a joke to Peter, mm -hmm. some like, Oh, you know, <clears throat> I couldn't, I couldn't, I said, you know, Peter, I grew up at a time where we'd all just sit around talking bad about your mother, you know, and, and not specifically your mother. And he just starts laughing. And the woman was <laughs> like, you shouldn't put women down. I'm like, we're not putting women down. We're oh talking bad God. about our mothers. Yeah. If any, I was like, you know, the same people that gave us all these issues we have today that are yeah. in therapy. And I was like, and she was like, well, what if you have a bad father? I was like, well, then fuck him too. You know yeah, what? Exactly. Fuck me. Like, it's I'm not awful exclusive. Dad sometimes. I was like, I'm Dude. a human being. Sometimes I'm going to make mistakes as a dad. Yeah. You know? Perfect example of what I was just saying. One person in the fucking room right. who ruins the, the vibe and the whole thing. And that's what half of this country has become. Right. And, and my thing was, I made that person laugh and get it. And I think that's the problem. We're not allowing the comedians to, to do. Yeah. We're not allowing comics to let us go through this 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 thing where we're going to talk about this painful stuff. Right. But listen Holy for shit. the funny and listen and listen for the message. I remember what I was going to say now too. And I'm this it's going to be a long splice in between all this shit. But <laughs> 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 I just literally move everything over all the stuff in the middle's gone. That's all right. Um no, it's fine. It's going it's all going to stay in. Nobody edits this shit. Um but uh Oh my, is it gone? No, it's back. So there, <laughs> I'm having an aneurysm live. It's so weird. I'm like, it's like, it just slams off the desk. Uh, <laughs> just, you, I, you, it's like someone just hits you with a brick live. Yeah, like, no, we've, we've been doing this virtually for so long. No one knows where I labor to call 911 to. I'm just passed out. You're all like, you're all right. The screen's blurred. You can't see if I'm breathing. What was your um, point? Now I'm sitting. Yeah, yeah. yeah sorry. Now the point was. <laughs> the point was is what Chappelle's thing. Whole thing is is I, people kind of miss the idea that comedy is inclusive. If like making fun of somebody, making a joke about somebody is not like it it's brings them back into the fold. If you have a group, especially if they're trans or if they're you know uh, brown or or you know whatever the fuck it is. If they if they have a group like that, and you're like, you can't touch us. We don't get joke. Like you can't make fun of us. That excludes them from everything, right. from from right. normal society. Right. Bringing people like ha being able to take a joke and being able to be made fun of, or or in an observational way, and being able to take that hit is a huge part of being accepted into society. Yeah. So this idea that suddenly that that's not that's somehow exclusive is horseshit. Right. The only right. that the only thing that makes it that way is when the group or certain people in the group take it 
quote unquote, offensively. And then they decide that they're this, you know, cherished, protected people that can't be fucked with. It's insane. And by the way, the Ortiz family in, in Boca Raton wants their bagels, too, just so that everybody knows. That <laughs> fair. What you said it, by the way, the Ortiz family. I'm like, yeah. am I somebody else supposed to know? <laughs> <laughs> just, uh, they're, they're all in my head. It's it's it, it, it's everything's in my head. It's they're crazy. all in my head. This is a this everything. is a reboot of Herman's head. Pretty much. I used to like that. But uh, <laughs> that's a great fucking show. I don't know yeah. why they never they never yeah. rerun that show. No, but because uh, I only think they had like well, that one season. Right. I'd still watch it. Yeah, it was a good they show. have one season of a bunch of other shit that's still on TV. Look at half the crap on Netflix that they cancel, but still leave up there oh, without yeah. anybody. They should say right before the thing of like a series, it's like this was only one, so don't invest. Or well, <laughs> I mean, well it's funny right? that you say that. Like Americans are so attached to serialized television mm. and like things going multiple seasons, but in many other countries, even in in the UK, you'll get one season of a show and that's it. Or right. like even Spanish, like Spanish soap operas, and I and I'm an expert because I had to sit. <laughs> Many years of my mother being like, "Mira, shut up!" <laughs> <laughs> and it's funny because she didn't have an accent, but I just, I just imagine her that way. And, I even... uh, my mother, my mother looked like a little Irish woman. You know, she was so. My mother looked like a little white lady, and she had no accent, so you could tell where she was from. Oh, so, that's fucking hilarious! And she grew up in Spanish Harlem when it was predominantly Italian. Right. So sometimes she sounded like, "Hey, what are you doing? You know, what's going yeah. on over there? Oh, you guys, shut great. the fuck." You know, like that. Yeah. And, and uh, my mom had a mouth. It was hilarious. But she was also an expert on novellas. And she'd be like, listen, my novella is only going to be for six months. You got to stay quiet from 8 to 9 p.m. every Thursday. <laughs> you know, you'd be like, all right, mom, whatever. Yeah. And, and by the way, Latina women who grow up in America somehow become ultra Latina after the age of 45. Wow. And I'm not even doing a bit. That's just the truth. Like every aging <laughs> Latina woman, she goes from like, oh, hi, my name is Jennifer. It's a pleasure to meet you, too. Para la lita, yo, papi. It's all okay. after 45. Even J-Lo's, J-Lo in private must be driving Ben Affleck crazy. Oh, God. In private, she sounds like Rosie Perez from like 1984. One, <laughs> Dude, mm. I cannot stand Rosie Perez's fucking voice. There is, there. it's just great. It's great. It's, it's like, entirely different now, though. You got to talk. I agree. Now. 100%. She, she but I'm thinking, I'm thinking in. Um, White uh, men that, can't jump. No, Nick Cage. What's the movie with Nick Cage? Uh, and they win the lottery, and he splits it with the uh, waitress. Oh my God! I know what you're talking about. It's a the great lottery? movie. <laughs> he, you know, honest I, to God, I, it, it might. No, it was a good it, movie. It was him, uh, Bridget Fonda. Bridget Fonda was fucking hot as shit. Back in, in the day. That, oh yeah, she was wearing Jackie the... Brown too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She had a nice oh little God. career, and then she got injured. Yeah, she got hurt. I know that fucking accident. sucks. It, it's yeah. terrible. It is. I mean, I love Jane Fonda, man. I look at Jane Fonda so now in her 80s, and I'm like, God, how are you? She's she's amazing. Dude, we're cl- I I legit we're it close could to happen getting... to you. There you go. Oh, thank you. It could happen to you. Great fucking movie. One of the best. Yeah. I mean, I love Nick Cage just because he's fucking insane. Um, and he yeah. and he takes these roles now that he clearly like he just doesn't care anymore, or maybe he maybe I don't know what it is, but like the movies he takes now are just off the wall, bad shit insane. He's either covered in blood. There's one movie I saw where he doesn't have, have one fucking line in the whole movie. And it's a horror movie yeah. and it's beautiful slasher basically. Yeah. It, it, the thing is he owes all that money. So he's got to pay it off. He does. Own. But I mean, he's choosing roles that are like, it's not like he's like rom-com rom. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's not garbage. It's just, it's just bizarrely, you know, like unique films that he's that he's happy to do. Um, Three tomatoes and a lemon meet in a war zone. <laughs> Nick Cage's buttery salad dressing. You're like you're like, all right, Nick, I get it. Yeah, and he's just screaming the whole time. Yeah. Um, what the hell are we talking about? Oh, that movie. Yeah, the lottery thing. Yeah, Rosie Perez's voice in that is just it kills me. Yeah, but she's, she's but it did wor- change. Yeah, she she worked hard on that, and 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 it's, it's a whole different voice. She's actually a really good. Uh, she's got a good eye for boxers, so really? she um she like sexually or just like. Sorry about that. That's cat. Usually, no, that's my daughter. It's a uh, nine thirty. We usually do a call. My my oh. oldest daughter and I, my oldest oh. daughter Gabby. She's autistic, and we do this. Uh, we do these scheduled calls at six thirty and nine thirty. Oh, and they're Dude. they're a hoop because you know there's no there's no one more truthful in this world than an autistic adult. And oh, that's uh, that's she yeah. she she um she's a pisser because she'll just be like, oh, by the way, you're getting fatter, daddy. Uh, <laughs> listen, I don't want you to die. Try a salad. All right. I gotta <laughs> go. Great. I love you. And I'm just like, all right, sweetheart. I love you. 
And hold on, she's gonna, she's not gonna stop. She will call. No, me. no, it's fine, man. Oh, she needs that call. It's okay. Yeah. Like, uh, really... Just give me, just give me one second. I just gotta text her. Sure. And yeah. uh, she's so cute. Uh... Bring her on. Maybe uh... she can tell us <laughs> something about me and Tom that we don't know. She's gonna be like, cut your hair, shave the beard. <laughs> Get a new look, Serpico. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what she's gonna do. And I'm sure you hear that shit all the time, right? Yeah. You're, you're like... Yeah, yeah. That or somebody, somebody. Apparently there was a film with uh, Stallone in it where he's got a beard and long hair. And oh my god, like, yeah, uh, it's the one with Rucker Hauer. That's it, Nighthawks. Yeah, Nighthawk. Yeah. yeah, somebody was like, Jesus Christ, Nighthawk. And oh I was like, my what the fuck, are you talking about? And then uh, I forgot about it. My age. See, this just for men shit ain't working. <laughs> <laughs> I got I'm like Nighthawk. <laughs> and somebody's like, Oh, way to go, Grandpa. You <laughs> fucking great. <laughs> yeah, just... I didn't even. And I'm not even that. It's weird. Like, uh, I don't understand the ageist way of being in America. Like, we have this weird thing with age. My grandfather rode a bike into after he was 100. Like, he was just out there moving around, yeah. didn't care. You know, and my grandmother, before she passed away at 97, she was jumping around, chasing the cat. And I mean, like, literally jumping, like, hopping over shit. Yeah. And I just my think grandpa built boat mind. docks in Arizona in like a yeah. hundred and something degree heat well into his sick, like late sixties, early set. Like, you know, I mean, I, I wouldn't fucking do that now. Nobody else would, but yeah, they have a real bad problem with ageism. Somehow like your wisdom is no longer Like the fact that you've lived longer means fucking jack shit, which I was, you know, I remember being in my twenties and like having my, but like, I still like, you know, would glean information off people who've been around longer than I have. And I don't know why right. it's not the case anymore. I, I, I don't know. I, 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 Somehow I think we all have a little bit of money. Phase. I think what? we all go through that phase where we're disconnected from like our elders. Sure. But, but yeah. now I, you know, when I'm when on, on my Wednesday afternoons when I'm stripping at the senior center for nickels after after bingo, that's what I do. No, nice. but it's like I like to I like to talk to just random old people because they're a pisser. They don't care. See, when you said stripping, I was like, oh, is that OnlyFans live? Because I'm young and I. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can go to my Patreon. Yeah, exa and, yeah, exactly. And, uh, yeah, exactly. And, and and we do it live every Thursday <laughs> at the Shady Oakers uh, off of Flatbush Ave. That's but, uh, great. It's just that would be awesome. Just stripping for the elderly. Yeah, uh, <laughs> and it's got to be middle-aged guys stripping for the elderly. Oh yeah, yeah. Perfect. Guys who you know no hope. They but yeah. they only like to look at people that reminded them of their body type when they were younger. Yeah, basically. Oh my, that's God. nice. Yeah, I but like then that. everybody lies. Then everybody see this is the other thing we have in society where we we we. We have these perfect body types for certain people. It's just weird. Oh, it is. Yeah. You know, I, but I also don't like, I don't like the idea that you, you know, or, or, I can't think of who it's fucking Lizzo. You know what I mean? Where she's yeah. just like, it's fine. And then the minute this girl eats a salad or says she's going on some kind of thing to try to take care of herself, people feel betrayed. And it's like, dude, right. her heart is screaming. You know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> like, let her yeah. let her eat a fucking salad. Or That's, take it's, a well, it's the same thing with Adele. Like, when Adele chose oh, to lose yeah. weight, people people got pissed. Yeah. Or even that, you know, and, and, it, and it's just, you know what it is? I'll be honest with you. When you become, uh, when you start to reach a certain level financially, and you go to your doctors and you get better doctors. Yeah. They're like, listen, I know it's a part of your image, but being this heavy will shorten your life. Totally. Yeah. Period. And it's like, I look at myself now and I'm like, all right it's time to start taking my diet seriously and i say that but i i probably have one more slice of a uh, uh, barbecue chicken pizza before yeah 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 like it's just we got it's it's this weird thing but as you get to a certain economics uh level and you're dealing with a, a better hopefully you get better health care you those people will be like no look man you gotta lose this weight yeah, absolutely yeah. and you hope that there are people like that in your life who are like hey fucking you know stop doing this stop doing that right. or you got to watch what you're eating at a certain point right. too because yeah. you just it's just a part of the way it is it's like not like it's not always okay to not be okay it, you can help it right. you can right. fucking get you can get past it right and there's some big people i know i know some large people that are fairly that have lived like my grandfather was a robust dude. He to to live over a hundred years old, and 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 he was just kind of stocky, right? You know, and he was a stocky dude. He was, you know, but it's it's kind of like I think also it's your level of of movement. Like you got to move. Yes. You know, and I, I think know that's, what you said earlier is so true. Like I feel like it's so in your head. If you if you maintain youth, and yeah. you don't accept like I'm old. That's it. I'm supposed to sit in yeah, this chair right. and watch TV. Right. I feel like it it it's a total different dynamic. You got to be active. Yeah, you see people that are 90 years old and act like they're, you know, younger than us. Mm -hmm. And then uh, right. I like actually that. genuinely don't understand people who do not 
do anything all day like you do not get up from there or like who can sit like i love video games i like you said when my friends and i would get some of my friends and i would get together play D D or do whatever but i don't understand the the all day not moving ever like how yeah. do you do it how do you fucking just sit there and play a video game for 20 hours to, maybe <clears> you know <throat> how? I, I, I have your answer oh hi this is dr mark anthony Ramirez. <laughs> um, can you at least put on a different hat <laughs> I know, right? Hold on, <laughs> Get a little something. Uh, but it's just weird. I really think a lot of it has to do with uh, and I, uh, the other thing in America with us being functionally poor. <laughs> oh yeah, I think I think we were also functionally depressed as a society. Oh totally. And I and I, and I, and, I, and I think where it starts is is the first thing you do every morning is you get on this thing, you check it because it's your alarm clock. Yep. It's your it's your life's blood. And the first thing you see is all these Facebook things. Yeah. And it's all triggering things yeah, based totally. on the algorithm. And that helps you. And then you're like, well, I don't feel like really doing much. If you and if you're not the type of guy that has to get up and go to work and you're you're you will play video games to disconnect from reality. You'll just sit and watch TV to disconnect from reality. And right. as far as the older generation goes, it was a part of this conversation we were discussing earlier, guys. And I and I wanted to jump in with this. Sure. Um, when we were talking about the FCC and Reagan and them changing the rules. Here's the other thing that uh, is really interesting about the elderly and the internet and Facebook. Because I know a lot of elderly people now with the smartphones and their and their apps. Here's something very interesting about it. They were raised, these guys as boomers, were raised on television. And you trusted, yeah. you were supposed to be able to trust what was coming through your TV. You trusted Edward R. Morrow. Yeah. You trusted okay. the news people. And that changed when they mm -hmm. did that. So now they're they were raising this mentality where I'm trusting what comes out of this box. Right. I'm trusting what's on my phone. I was raised this way. It's it's they're programmed to trust yeah. that information. Yeah. So if, if they're on Fox and there are certain states like in Florida, certain areas where it's like uh, the Sinclair broadcast system and, and all they do is beam out this crap. 24 hours a day so you just sit there and you just kind of like oh you know well i trust this i was raised to trust what comes off the tv i was raised to trust the stuff i'm seeing yeah you know and it's sad but that's what happens to our elderly sense. people you know and now how dare you, know, you try to make me understand the people i oppose like you know like <laughs> i'm not trying to make you understand but here's the thing if we can't if we can't show our anybody if you can't show compassion or try to understand other people then, then you've become the people that you don't understand and yeah. hate. Like you, you, you. Well, it's like, look, I totally understand the whole like, like I'm, I don't, you know, I'm as far left as you can get. You know me, completely yeah. socialist, Bernie Sanders guy. I have no problem with anybody doing whatever the fuck they want as long as it doesn't hurt anybody else. But right. I think it's bizarre that you don't let you don't get to let people who are older in the other generations take a fucking minute to readjust to assess a situation. They either have to be completely 100 percent pure and take it at face value or that's not it which is odd because the, our figure like the generations coming up do not acknowledge their own flaws and how long it takes them to just get over normal shit jokes right. for instance or anything else in general so it's weird right. like um like the you know when the jk rowling thing came out i feel like nobody really understood what the fuck she said to begin with anyway they just labeled her a thing which i hate labels right. told her that's what she was and jumped fucking shit but like I'm always for people being uh, embracing being uncomfortable because I feel like they're like you, you can only be comfortable in your own home. Once you step outside, that's it. You're in the you're in the world now and you're and you're fucking, you know, you're around people who are going to say shit you don't like. You're going to be you're gonna be around people who have conversations openly and loudly about right. abortion, right. people around you that curse or wear right. T-shirts you don't agree with and all the other shit. So you don't have any right to be comfortable outside of your own home. You need to learn to adjust to that. The craziest thing is is that all she was saying was that there are people who are uncomfortable with the idea of somebody else of the same, you know, whatever their, you know, genitalia is and whether they're wrong or right, you still have to address that comfort level. But it's funny because when I say people have to be uncomfortable, they're like, you're a piece of shit. People should be comforted. And I'm like, Oh fuck. That's again, I'm going to hold fast in my opinion, but they're uncomfortable. <laughs> and they're like, right. they have no right. right to be, they have every right to be uncomfortable. They should be. Right. And, and it's like, how do you not see the juxtaposition of that? Right. And I don't I don't get it. <clears throat> I say uh, it's like the whole bathroom debate. It, look, it's, it's ludicrous because you're in a fucking bathroom. Get in, get out, take a shit, go home. Right. Like just just make them a universal. I mean, look, there are certain bathrooms they that, be. That, that are just they come with urinals and, and all of that. And, and honestly, I'm not a fan of the urinal. 
Yeah. Dude, I I'm a 100 percent a stall guy. I go, I don't yeah. want to pee next to another fucking dude. I don't feel. Yeah. Not only yeah. that, and I'll tell you why I don't want to pee next to another dude is because they do exactly what Joel Osteen did to you. I've never been in a urinal standing there by myself where some old fat fuck didn't walk his drunk ass directly over and start talking to me with his dick in his hand. All right. Not this is not the time, fella. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I remember I, I did a gig out in uh, Allentown, Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. At this place, at Jelly Beans or some weird place, and I was headlining, and they were feeding me pictures of Jack and Coke. So I was getting pictures. Like, Jelly you know, Beans. And, so I'm like doing this gig, and I'm on stage, and whatever, mm-hmm. having a good time. And I'm twisted. I'm getting twisted, but it's whatever. Yeah. And uh, I have I was going through a rough time. I was drinking heavily at the time. My my dad had just passed and shit. Oh, so I was just like, sorry. An awful case of mourning. And uh, but I go to pee after my set. Mm-hmm. And I'm looking for the urinals or the stall, but they don't have one. They only had a piss trough. Oh. And it's this giant bathtub they pulled out of some grandmother's house. And I'm standing there and I'm like, oh, Christ. And I'm like, I'd rather pee on the side of this building than piss in this thing. <laughs> <clears throat> because I'm pissing there and, and I'm standing there and I'm peeing and I'm a little tipsy. And I'm, you know, I'm like trying to be comfortable. And this big biker white guy walks in and I'm like, oh, great. Because I know I'm on the border of racism and yeah, run like fuck town. So, right. And this guy walks in and he's just peeing. You were very funny. And I was like, oh, thanks. And I'm standing there and I'm peeing and he's peeing. And he just looks over at me. He was like, boy, why is your dick so dark? Oh, my God. Because where'd you get a black dick? Oh, Jesus. And Christ. I was just like mortified. I was just like. I was like, well, if you were listening to my act, you could tell, like, I'm multiracial, and thanks to colonization and rape, here I am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and he was just like, oh, yeah, I heard that joke. That's good stuff. I, I don't I don't agree that it's true. I was like, can we not talk right yeah. now with our dicks out? Can we not? And you're well, talking you're about the color at it. of yeah. my penis. Like, what are we? Yeah. This is not. But the problem was my ex-girlfriend was on the phone at the time when I was on. Like, I was like, oh, baby, I'm drunk. I'm going to stay at the local hotel. You know, mm-hmm. they got me a room. And, then, and this guy comes in, what's up with the black penis? And then my phone dies. So she spends 24 hours thinking that I'm getting lynched in Pennsylvania. Oh, oh my God. Jesus So it's, it's just, it's it, it's weird. That's why, it's like, I was never a fan of urinals then. I'm not a fan of the piss trough. Give me a stall. Yeah. Give me a toilet. Because sometimes you're peeing and it's going to lead you to have to take a dump anyway. Like, I want that option and I want my privacy. Yeah. See, I didn't see her thinking you were getting lynched. I was thinking she was thinking you're at a glory hole. <laughs> what is this guy doing? <laughs> yeah, I know. But, you know, brown folks, we worry about that stuff. So yeah, yeah, kinda... totally. Yeah, they're not. <laughs> Tom... Oh, the joys of Tom thinking of glory hole. <laughs> I know, right? He, he that is glory. some He's like, he's like hey, what about a glory hole? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I wish. I wish it would have been a glory hole. And I'd be like, hey, honey, I got to call you back. I'm making a friend. That is, <laughs> that is such a great if you guys hate urinals, you must really hate that trough that they have at like those fairs. Yeah, yeah that's, what was that's what he was peeing into. That was peeing oh, into. that's what it was. Yeah. yeah. And I just well, don't... forget forget the, the con- closeness of a trough. The fact of the matter is, is you're not going back out of there without pee on you. Right. Like those troughs are not made to absorb what the water. Right. It's just like yeah. just everywhere. Just fucking everywhere. It's it, we have it's it's just We've got a lot to fix in this country, man. Just... Starting with peeing troughs. Yeah. And, and, you know, and we need to, and, and the bidet needs to be instituted, man. I, I love the bidet. Uh, and yeah, I'm too. a weirdo. There it's... was, dude, Pennsylvania is one of the worst places, I think, to like Philly or that whole area. I did a show uh, there, like mid Trump presidency or whatever. And oh, I didn't, I, you know, no matter where I was, I did my, I did my fucking material exactly. I didn't care. And I did something and some dude stands in the up in the audience and lifts up his shirt and his back. And he's got a huge Trump tattoo, MAGA, like the whole thing in his shirt. Yeah. And he goes, what does this tell you about me? And I said that you're capable of making two horrible mistakes in four years, <laughs> within four years. <laughs> and he followed me outside. And like, like, and I was just like, oh, this is going to be the worst goddamn fucking day. Like, you know what I mean? Where I was just like, because I got like an applause, you know, half the audience liked it, half didn't, obviously. But it was like one of those things where I was just like. And so he follows me outside and he like, like basically like tries to lecture me the whole time. And I'm just like, I just want to go home. I don't want to get burnt with a cigarette or whatever the fuck you're going to do. 
Like, you know what I mean? To the point where the club owner had to come out and just be like, hey, man, why don't you come back in and have another beer on the club? And he was like, all right. You know, whatever. Like, And I was like, thanks. I'm going home. And he's <laughs> Remember what I learned you, boy. Yeah, like, <laughs> exactly. I'm like, fucking Pennsylvania, man. It's just the worst. I'm like, can't you, you know. Look, but you know what? It's not just Pennsylvania. It, look, no, it's I, not. It's I remember, I remember Michigan when I first, did the same shit. Right. I, I remember when I first started doing stand up <sighs> many, many moons ago, like 20 something years ago. And I did my first, like my second or third gig outside of New York City, like like 50 miles out in a place called Marlboro, New York. Mm -hmm. And holy hell, these people had like hee haw accents. They had like Southern. And I was just like, yes. And I got into the bar and I was like, oh, hey, I'm here for the show. She's like, oh, how you doing, love? Well, let me tell you something. And I'm like, what? Ah, who, where? I said, where were you born? She's like, New York. It was like, no, no. New I'm right. I was born right here outside of Marlboro, New York. I'm from New York. I was like, no, no, no. I yeah. Mean, why the Dixieland accent? I know. It's I, weird. It was My, we it's weird. But America you know, is very rural. Do you know you, your friends with Rick Adana, right? Yeah. Yeah. Do you know James Oaks? Sounds familiar. I probably yeah, he was his roommate. He was a comic and roommate for a long time. James and I, we went on the road together. It was my first time, like I was super young, uh, going to the Catskills. And in my mind, from reading all these stand-up books when I was, you know, younger, I was like, oh man, Catskills this is going to be classic Jewy territory. Yeah. You, know, you know what I mean? Borscht, like you start thinking Borscht Belt. Borscht Belt, you know. Jack, yeah. you know, Jackie Mason, fucking, right. uh, you know, um, uh, what's his name from Herbie the Love Bug and uh, like, I don't know why that movie Mad Mad World and uh, oh my god, no Heavy Set Dude. Nope, nope, Heavy Set Dude. He was the uh, seagull in Little Mermaid. <laughs> what's his name? Dom DeLuise. Like, no, what is wrong with me? Come on, you got it. Hang on. I'm having a, you're muted, Tom. I'm having a Lewis Tom, Black moment. Tom, Tom is Googling right now. <laughs> um, I'm trying to get my Google on. You know, it's uh oh my god, this is breaking me right the now. Seagull and yeah, yeah, it's um whatever. It's it just it's oh um <laughs> it's um fuck it, it doesn't matter. This is no, I don't it, know. it matters now. This <laughs> I cut, I'm cutting it now. It's um you know uh oh my god, don't fucking this is gonna kill me. Really, we gotta get this. Um, they talk he, he, this guy, this guy in Bad Mad World who was uh buddy um, hack it. Buddy Hackett, Jesus fucking Christ! Could you imagine? I can't tell Joe Star that I forgot his name because he's gonna ream me out. Um, Buddy Hackett, yeah. What was my point? That was it. I always thought it was Buddy Hackett. Anyway, long story short, same same situation. Awesome. I get there, I'm performing in a barn, and they're roasting the biggest fucking pit, like live, like yeah. literally. There's a burly man like doing one of these all Southern accents, and they literally like I haven't been down to the city in years, and I was just like. Where the fuck did we just go? Like it's weird. Yeah, it's Northern it's New weird. York. You go fifty, long walk you go 50 miles. Not a great story. That's all right. <clears throat> hey, you brought you you brought the late great Buddy Hackett back to life for the few precious moments. My problem was I was getting Aquafina. She's the new voice of, of Scuttle <laughs> the Seagull. Really? I don't even know. They, re <laughs> they redid the Little Mermaid and Scuttle. The... Yeah, and 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 Aquafina because I had you, no you you. You, you know that she's another one that gets that, that gets uh, a lot of yeah. attitude and flack for appropriation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. So, yeah, that's fucking wild. Yeah, they're mm. taking white mm. seagull rolls away from white people. Um, <laughs> and Superman is gay. Did you see that today? The the did, son of, I did the, son of Lois, the son yeah. of Lois and Clark. Right, is, is a Superman. He's a, just like you know, he's got the powers, but he's gay. And you know what I love? People, people are who losing have their shit. Yeah, people are losing their shit, but people who have never read a comic book in their entire fucking lives mm. are losing their shit. Because if you do read them, you knew it was Superman's fucking son. Right. And I, who gives a shit? My my cousin from Brooklyn, you know, uh, is we don't you know, we don't really talk that much anymore. But he was like, are you fucking kidding me? Like on his Facebook, like this is getting ridiculous now what the the drawing on paper is sucking the face of a dude <laughs> like that bothers you you piece of shit like it doesn't even have, yeah, it's just irritates the shit. I, I just want to go to one of your family reunions at this well point. we call them funerals um <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and you're more than welcome to come to brizzy's in new york on 40th oh, street in brooklyn God. and have a good time with us um i know. just that's it's weird though that the people are just like i i read it and i mean every race of yeah. human being was pissed off that superman yeah. was gay and 
you know. But he's not gay. He's bi. Why can't he's he? Bi, he's bi. First of all, he's that's, a fucking you know, alien. Right. You know, well, half alien because Lois is his mom. So he's like the Obama right. of superheroes. Oh, that's true. Yeah. yeah. yeah he's half, you know. But the part of him that's half white woman. I mean, you know, if they gave a shit about history, I wonder what they'd have to say about Jesus jerking off two dudes at the same time in the fucking vomitorium. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I, I've never read that vomit? story. Is that is that the is that is that, is that in the book of Yippee? That's the one I'm writing. <laughs> that's the one I'm writing. I, I didn't tell you. Lo and that. behold, while Jesus was traveling and low on cash, he was giving handies at the vomitorium. <laughs> An ancient. Did I say Jesus or Caesar? I don't know. Whoever, which one of those? Whoever had stronger wrists, I guess. Like it matters. I anyway. Whoever yeah. had. Well, we know who had stronger wrists. He was fucking hung by his hand. Like, yeah. come on. Yeah. See, Christ always wins. He's, you know, it's good to be Jesus. Christ yeah. always wins, except for that one time. Yeah. <laughs> but he kind of wanted that. He wanted that because he, did. he died. He died for your sins. And, yeah. Uh, not mine, but yours. And, yeah, uh, of course. Yeah, I know. And uh, you know, whatever. Uh, look, I. I'm a spiritual person. I love the. Uh, I, I was raised Catholic, and uh, and, I, and I actually enjoyed the hell out of Catholic school. It was creepy. Mm -hmm. We were probably the last generation of people who uh, did some really awful shit that would now get us arrested. Oh yeah, and, uh, and we just thought it was kid stuff. So sure. you know, it was a. It's a different society than the one my children have grown up in. So I just kind of look at it and I'm like, hey man, I can adjust. Whatever. Of course. Yeah. I, don't, I mean, that's just kind of it. And there, again, we've like the the idea that there's any. I mean, look, look at these. Fu the, first of all, everybody that's online, like Twitter, should be declared its own country. Anything social media related, because it doesn't actually exist. None of those people matter. They've all got right. like if anybody cared enough to dive into some rando's life, mm -hmm. you know, you'd just either find out that they never left their house or that they're just fucking mentally unstable. It's an I, illness. It just it's mental <clears throat> illness, and it's right. But they're allowed to fucking say what they want on there. Um, I just. The reason, I, I'm sorry. No, no, I was going to say the only reason why it's taken seriously is because they can make oh, money. It's all money. Everything is, yeah. is, 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 you know, all these Instagram, uh, you know, influencers and all this stuff. People just make money off of it. Totally. So, I mean, as long as you're making money off it, like, I'm not upset about making money off the internet. I mean, I get it. No. We got to, we got to do that. It's a part of, yeah, it's we do. Part about being a comic as well. Yeah. But um, it is. I don't know. I just, I love everybody, man. I really go into this world that I just like. I love everybody. I may not like everybody, but I love everybody. And it's different because I give everybody that I meet or interact with the opportunity to be loved and just have a a peaceful coexistence. Right. And, you know, people prove themselves to be assholes. I'm kind of like, all right, dude, you're an asshole. Don't have to deal with you. That's it. Yeah. Just keep it moving. I don't yes. have to, like, put my hands on my hips and be like, I'm not for me to you. Why? It's like stepping so... over a piece of shit on the sidewalk. You don't right, fucking yeah. argue with it while it's there. You're right. just like, I'm just going to leave that there. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. Exactly. It's kind of like uh, it's it's weird. We we live in a country where people uh, like when you look at um, abortion, you know uh, that like whole, physically look at it. Yeah, you know when you're holding one in your hand after it's been sucked out. <laughs> no, um, I'm just saying like when you look at abortion as a whole, like the the, the arguments against it are crazy, right. and, when, and they just the, people are so triggered because they just be like, well, Jesus wouldn't want that. Jesus never discussed it, so why don't we ask Jesus? And when he comes back, he'll tell us. Why don't we wait? And just make a rat like a logical choice here, because sadly, they when when your state goes, even if you've been raped, you have to keep that baby. Oh uh, yeah. Well, then you're setting that child up for a horrible life. Right. Yeah. People never talk about the responsibility it takes right. to acknowledge the fact that you need to have an abortion, which is a huge right. like it, like you're just taking that. You know, I'm sure there's mental anguish involved with it. It's not there's just a, easy peasy yeah. one two three, and right. and you're and you're done with it or whatever. Right. But like, it's it's a huge you know, it's, it's a, a huge, huge decision to make, to make for it a is. woman. And, you know, even sometimes even when I talk about it, I feel like I'm not I'm not the perfect or the right person to talk. About. I'm not a woman. Right. Exactly. You know, I've I've been a part of that decision. And, yeah. and, and it's like but ultimately it's a, it's a woman's body. It's a woman's choice. And it's it's and 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 people act like women just make these uh, abortion decisions like they they're like, oh, my God. And now I got to get my nails done. Like, it's like nothing. Oh, else. yeah. No, it's I it's, mean, my. I have friends who've done it and it's agonizing and it's, yeah. and it's going back and forth about it. And it's, well, I, you know, all this other shit and like, you know, always been there to, you know, listen or whatever. And sometimes kind of, you know, be there for a ride. You know, sometimes you right. gotta drive people you're like, fuck it, let's go. <clears throat> and here's my thing. I think uh, if you're going to, if you're going to have a state law, which forces women to have children, then you should also have a, a college fund set up for those kids. Absolutely. That's it. Like you, 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 you got to balance it out. You've got to have uh, a food budget, 
a home budget and a, an education budget for that child. That's it. Yep. You have to have it. Yep. If and if you're not going to provide for that child, if the state's not going to provide for this child that you're forcing into existence, yeah, then you don't get a say. Yeah, I completely agree. Yeah. Um, I like that message. And on that note, we are going to ask you the last two questions of the show because I've kept you for almost an hour and a half, which has been great, by the way. But oh, I, Mary, feel bad. You got your – yeah. Um, so uh, let me ask you this. One first question, if you can go back in time and uh, give yourself a piece of advice that would help you today, what would it be? Oh, God. I love the sigh. <laughs> because there's a lot. Uh, yeah. I think I think the number one uh, – one of the – Hmm. Don't go pee in Pennsylvania. Yeah, that, <laughs> Not that's, into a trough. Um, honestly, love myself. Love yourself mm. and take care of yourself first. Put yourself, create, like, be healthily selfish. Like, love Ooh. yourself and just in a very healthy manner, be a little bit more selfish. I have my life growing, I, I sacrifice a lot for my family, my parents, everybody. And I put all my, like, I just put myself aside a lot. And nice. And to the point where, like, even with my ex-wife, it was just like, whatever, I'll let you run the narrative. I'm a bad guy. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, listen to your mom. I'm, I'm a terrible person. Listen to your mom. And, right. and, it, and it was just really, it's that's a self-destructive pattern. That, sure, absolutely. You know, so yeah. that, love myself and uh, always, and develop two forms of credit. So incorporate yourself, <laughs> you know, like, seriously, like, have yeah, an LLC. that makes sense. You know, and and, and, and give yourself uh, the options. Working for yourself is better than being held, you know. Yes. With a knife to your throat by somebody else. That's 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 my answer to that one. Second question. Right. Second question is, what had to end in your life that uh, allowed you to wind up where you are now? We don't talk about her. No. Um, <laughs> what had to end in my life? Good or bad. Me? Could be anything. And doesn't have to um, be about your career either. You know what I had to end? It's kind of connected to the first answer. It, it, mm -hmm. I had to start to love myself and I had to learn to put myself first a little bit and not mm -hmm. <clears throat> like I had to learn to think about myself. Really, mm -hmm. it, it, honestly, that's that's it's, it's all part of the same answer. It's just really having a healthy love and respect of myself and valuing myself. When I stopped devaluing myself is when everything changed. Hmm. You know, and uh, and I think that that that's the most important thing we don't teach our children. Yeah, you know, we don't we don't raise. It's funny we we we're not raising really educated children because our educational system is is a wreck. But right. we don't raise emotionally intelligent children either. I agree, and I think that's something that we have to work on as a yep. society. So that's that's it. Those are my answers. Beautiful, dude. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming on, man. I appreciate it, and it's always good talking to you. It was a great pleasure to be on with you, John and Tom. I really, really appreciate it. Tom, please bring your MySpace back, please. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, if I could leave you with one thing, just please. <laughs> please. Uh, and guys, check me out uh, at LaptopMag.com. Yes. And lap yeah, check out my humorous, my humor. You know, I throw a little humor in my reviews, and uh, I always will steer you correct. Awesome. Laptop Magazine, and we have our YouTube, where I'm just taking over and doing all kinds of videos that are fucking hilarious and fun. What Beautiful. You Thanks. YouTube? Where are you at on YouTube? I'll make sure we. Uh, uh, I, uh, well, my YouTube is MarkAnthonyRamirez.com, but that's going to get over. It's a uh, that's going to get overhauled because uh, we're going to be creating a whole bunch of new content, Ooh. and I'm I'm going to be focusing on the tech journalism humor thing for a little bit. But I'm also writing a new one hour special. So, and that Very hopefully nice, man. will be filmed later next year. Where are you going to film it? Uh, I'm thinking. Can you talk about it? I'm thinking about. I'm thinking about. I'm trying to get the Bell House for that. Like I'm really oh, trying. Very to Very nice, dude. The Bell House is great because that's where. Um, Carol Montgomery filmed her uh, first um, ladies, uh, uh, women of a certain age, right? And, and I, 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 yeah, and and it's right and down the street from my house. So <laughs> <laughs> basically, it's I'm lazy, and I and, and, and it's it's right down the street from me, literally a block. You're like it was that or the subway around the corner, either right, one. You know, it's 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 someplace, but I, I would love to do the Bell House and uh, it, make it a special event, which I kind of talked to you about a little bit in private. Yeah, and it and and I'm still working on putting that together because I, I kind of. If I'm going to film a special, I'm going to make it definitive. You know, I want it to, whether it, it, they buy it or not, that's, I don't even care. I just care about I know. getting the truth out there, you know? So. Yep. I hear you, man. Yeah. Thank you guys good. for having me. I really appreciate it. Dystopia tonight.